Y'all respect the one who got shot. I respect the shooter. John L. Pinnell, and this is Designated Report Behind the Lens, powered by Designated Report. And I'm here with the super talented, always on the move, <laughs> Jade Hewitt. How are you? I'm doing great, my man. How are you? Oh, and you know, as you say, I'm always on the move. I'm actually in my like one week of you know downtime, so it's nice to be a little lazy. But I'm good, man. How are you? I mean, define lazy, because before we got on, you were hiking Yosemite. Like, what what are you going to be doing for the next week or so before you got to go into volleyball? Take some naps, probably <laughs> play some Fortnite and uh, go to go. bed at around 830. And that's that's pretty much my schedule. <laughs> that, that sounds perfect, honestly. Um, let's um, so again, I know you're super busy. You what season just finished up softball? Yes, we had AUX softball for three weeks, and then we had about a two or three week break, and then we had championship season softball. So they were kind of back to back. So we just finished champ our fourth season of AU Pro softball, and uh, now we're heading into our third season of AU Pro volleyball. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, the <clears throat> shoot, I already forgot what I had for you. Oh, <laughs> AU. A- a- um, so where are the AU games um are they all played in the same location um each sport is in a different city so and those cities have changed so softball has been up right outside of Chicago um volleyball has been in Dallas in the past this year we're about to be in Phoenix for six weeks um basketball has been in Las Vegas and we were in Dallas earlier this year. And then lacrosse is um, just right outside Baltimore. So for, you know, for volleyball season coming up, everyone that's on site will go to Phoenix and be there for six-ish weeks. Uh, and then season is over and everyone kind of goes home. So yeah, gotcha. we're, on the move. we're on the move quite a lot. So where are you right now for your little break? Right now I'm in Baton Rouge. I'm a Louisiana girl. I'm a New Orleans girl. So I'm back home um just sweating to death because it's I mean it's hot everywhere who are we kidding yeah. um but uh yeah I'm in good old Louisiana nice nice so um I did a little research on you uh through social media through your website and you've done a lot <laughs> um USA softball <clears throat> NFCA AU as we mentioned um you know, you have photo credits with Sports Illustrated and Dix and MLB Network and all these different places. Um, am I missing anything? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think what you're saying is I'm a little bit old now in the game. I, when I first <laughs> went into pro softball, I was like 25, you know, like pretty young and fresh. And now I think I'm the second oldest on our content team. Okay. You know, there are some things like TikTok is past me. Like, I don't, you know, so... <laughs> I'm just yes. trying to keep up with all these young guys, that these young kids that come into the content team, you know, but I think so, that pretty much covered it. <clears throat> gotcha. And you said you came in at 25 shooting professional softball. Yeah. The, the, the first team or the, really the first pro sports that I was involved with was a professional softball team in the national pro fast pitch league, the NPF called the Dallas charge. Um, and they were advertising that, you know, they were going to be a new team in the league. And um, they had an internship program. So I applied. I was the only media intern. There were like 22 of us. It was crazy. And I was the only one for media. So I really had free reign to do whatever I wanted. And I was at the time I was 25. I was the oldest intern. They called me grandma. It was like super embarrassing. Terrible. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I was 25. I was like kind of the same age as some of the rookies and the younger players and now in AU, I'm like 100% considered part of the old crowd. Like you know, <laughs> when they talk about the veteran players, like that's my age. So, you yeah. Know. <laughs> and you played softball collegiately, correct? I did. And I, it's, a, it's a miracle that I still have like kneecaps and legs that function. Um, I was a catcher and third baseman uh, at, a, at Millsaps College, which is a small division three school. And uh, yeah, I played my four years at Millsaps. And uh, got my degree and, you know, I'm obviously not pro softball talent. So I think my time on the field was 
was was nicely wrapped up my senior year. But uh, yeah, you, you know, former player, it's nice to have that connection with the athletes, you know, where you know the game. For sure, for sure. And um, you got your degree. Is your degree in something specific to photography, videography, um, media, journalism, anything like that? Kind of. It's um, studio arts with a concentration in digital arts and a minor in art history. Um, so I was really up in the studio with painters and and sculptors and people that draw and all these wonderful artists. And there wasn't really a professor or courses on photography or, or anything else. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of like, go make your work and like call us when you're done. And, um, and so I kind of was like able to do whatever I wanted, which, you know, I, I just learned through trial and error. Um, yeah. the, actually the first quote company I ever made when I was like 13 years old was called, it doesn't work productions. Cause I literally couldn't figure out how anything worked. And like YouTube wasn't a thing. You couldn't go like Google the answer. You just yeah. had to like buckle down and figure out it out so um yeah so my undergrad is in studio arts technically um and then my graduate degree is in uh is in film production so that okay. was you know, working on film sets and directing and and being a first assistant director which is the job I loved and yeah a lot of time spent on film sets so how did the transition into sports photography happen is it just because of the the sports background the fact that you played um how did that transition happen from the film set to a field that's a great question. I Back in my senior year of high school, I started making recruiting videos um, for my friends who were, you know, trying to go play in college as well. And so I had a mini DV Sony camcorder that like fits in the palm of your hand. Yep. And it was those little tapes that are like this big. Yep. Um, and uh, I would go out and shoot my friends recruiting videos that they would send to college coaches to say like, hey, recruit me. Um, and so that was really the first thing that kind of linked both of my passions. And I can really thank my dad. Cause I think my dad was like, I need you to shoot a video of this girl. And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> um, so that was really the first time that it, that I really kind of connected them. And then probably around college was when it really started to continue to connect the dots between sports and shooting my college coach every now and then would like, let me bring my camera to the field um, and stuff like that. And, my teammates would like come in on their off day for me to make videos, which at the time I thought I was like Spielberg. And now I watch them and I'm like, these are so bad. Um, but I, yeah, I, I had a great support system around me, both with family and, and people throughout high school um, and college that really uh, just encouraged me to, to continue to, to merge the two and eventually, you know, get to a sweet spot, which was what I'm doing now. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. I've, not definitely not at the level that you have, but I've done some baseball shooting. Uh, I've never done softball. Um, but I ask everybody if they've played and you have, obviously does having the, um, an actual background in, in playing, does that help you when it comes to shooting a softball game, for instance? One million percent. Um, usually it'll, it'll obviously kind of come into play the most with, when you're shooting um, someone hitting. Um, so, you know, for example, if if Victoria Hayward's up to bat and I know in her first at bat of the game, she really likes to get deep in the count. She's really trying to work oppo. Then I'm going to set up in a spot where I know that she's kind of looking to go with her at bat. And then when she gets into her second and third at bat, I'll say, okay, now she's really got a beat on this pitcher. Vic really hits the drop ball really well. So I think she's going to get around the ball. So let me go down the line this way so I can get a nice, pretty finished shot of her swing. Um, and you literally just do that all game as best, as best you can. Yeah. Um, same with pitchers, knowing pitchers tendencies, knowing how they throw, um, anticipating, you know, what they're going to do, especially, you know, with defensive schemes, you know, really anticipating double play moments. Um, it makes a huge difference. It also makes a really big difference in the edit because, I don't really have a good memory, but I can shoot a game and go back in my photos and remember every single person's at bat and know that, oh, I was on the wrong side. Haley McClenney went oppo. I know I didn't really get that at bat, but I remember gotcha. her fourth at bat and she, you know, so you just kind of repeat that all game and and having a, a sense of, of the game and where you anticipate things will go is, is a, 
yeah, it's really big. I mean, everything about it. It's just, it's easy knowing the game. And I can say that because then I went to go shoot volleyball at AU when I was like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Yeah, I was like, I don't know anything. I don't know any of the terms. I don't know what your warmups look like. I don't know where anyone's going to be. Yeah. Um, it was a completely terrifying different experience. <laughs> um, but yes, there's a massive difference when you know the game versus when you don't. Yeah, for sure. I know I was speaking with somebody recently i can't remember off the top of my head and um they just kind of made the point that i ne- had never thought of um that team photographers always seem to get the best photos and the rationale was they know the players they know their players so they know their tendencies they know you know all, all the things that you alluded to um and I mean, as much as it is, you know, being in the right place at the right time, there is a certain amount of luck that goes into getting the the, the right shot. But um, if you know those tendencies, if you know, you know, somebody likes to go opposite field against, you know, mm-hmm. a left-handed pitcher or whatever the case is, you can kind of position your yourself to um, to be in the best position to capture the moment. So that's very 100%. interesting just hearing you the way you broke it down so um, <laughs> like systematically. I think it it's really also huge too when when you are a team photographer or in my case, you know, league photographer and you know, I've worked with some of these athletes now since my first year in pro softball and so it's been like 7 or 8 years and over time they they really begin to trust you and trust mm. that, you know, I have their best interests at heart. Um, kind of one of my just things I live by is that the athlete comes first, not yes. the team, not the, it doesn't matter if I'm with USA or athletes unlimited or whatever. It's <clears throat> the athlete comes first. Sierra Romero comes first before the name that's on the front of her Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think when you invest your time and your energy and and your commitment into the athletes, they then give that to you in return yes. that they might not give to someone else that they don't know that that has a press pass that walks up and wants to take a picture of them. And that's where some of my favorite photos come in because you can see their personality like Kat Osterman, Kat Osterman before a game looks like she might bite your head off, like, <laughs> you know, and that could be the end of your life. <clears throat> but I got to know Kat and I got to shoot her. And, and if I walk up to a pregame and she's in a silly mood and I want to get a silly portrait, she's probably going to say yes, because gotcha. she trusts that I have her best interest at heart. So, so it's definitely both, you know, action for sure, knowing the game, but also um, being able to have the athletes trust you and be vulnerable around you. And those are where, in my opinion, you get the best portraits. Yes. Yes. Um, so athletes unlimited, we've spoken on quite a bit already. And, um, that's really when I was introduced to you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's been, um, it started out with softball, if I'm not mistaken in Mm -hmm. 2020, right? Yep. That's right. Um, so I was introduced to it in 2022, um, cause I mainly shoot, um, the WNBA. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the players from the W were playing in AU and yeah. that's when I got introduced to it. Um, it's grown tremendously in the last few years. Um, can you just explain a little bit what AU is, how it came about, um, and what your role in, in the whole company is? I feel like I was probably like on a staff call where I should have like the elevator pitch recited from memory. (laughs) Probably someone's going to be like for real. Um, (laughs) But Athletes Unlimited uh, is a wonderful company that houses four women's professional sports leagues that play uh, main, you know, six week seasons every year. So volleyball, softball, lacrosse, and basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and one of the, the, the two special things about AU are number one kind of technically is the scoring system. So our teams each week rotate so that there's a, the whole league is based on a leaderboard by points and you can get points in a variety of ways. Each week, the top four people on the leaderboard are the captains. And then each week they, they draft a squad. So you're constantly seeing new teams and, and new little clusters That's form awesome. each week. Um, and so that makes it really unique it's really fresh. You know, you can see, you know, your, your absolute favorite players play on the same team one week and then the next week they're on opposite teams. So, yeah. so that's really what makes it so different from kind of a technical side from the other side of it is they really put the athletes first and the athletes have the voice in the company, which I feel like 
that's kind of said a lot, but in athletes unlimited, it's so true. So if the athletes are like, you know what, the libero Jersey this year, instead of it being orange, we want it to be white. Like that's what's happening. Or if the that's athletes awesome. say, you know, <clears throat> we want to have a rest day on this day or something, then that's what's happening. Um, the athletes are the voice of the company. Um, and they are given a tremendous amount of influence and, and, and I say power, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and it makes it really, really different and really special from any other company that I've worked for. Um, athletes unlimited is really focused on giving back on being, um, just a great healthy company. Um, we do a lot of work with nonprofits and there's a lot that goes on off the field that athletes unlimited does. It's not just, you know, a ball game and, and that's it. Um, sure. it's really, really special company that, um, is doing a lot of just really wonderful things from, from the little to the big. So, you know, we have, um, sensory bags when you come in, if, if you want to grab a sensory bag to make it the best experience for you, you know, all the way up to working with nonprofits all over the country, there's just a lot. So, um, and then my role is lead photographer. So I am in charge of all photo for the whole company, um, mm -hmm. with, shooting three out of the four sports with our freelancers and all that kind of stuff, but working with the social team, the video team, you know, and kind of every other department that kind of touches on photography. So that was a very long winded answer. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I, I feel like not enough people or again, it's still, it's still relatively new. Um, and I really I, like, I honestly want to get the word out more about AU just because from everything you've said and from everything that I've read and like the company's mission statement, like I'm, I truly love like the, the culture, I guess mm -hmm. that Absolutely. it's, you know, that that's been built and is growing. And, um, I just think I, it's, it's just really dope to me. I just love everything about it. So I, I just wanted to make sure we touched on it and like yeah, really understood what it was. Yeah, no, you could literally talk about it for like ever on just how, how crazy different it is, but uh, yeah, it's a very special company for sure. Yes. So you said you're shooting three out of the four sports, volleyball, softball, and what else? Basketball. And basketball. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's the one that you're not doing? Lacrosse? Um, yeah, I haven't shot lacrosse. Um, the first season that uh, lacrosse had was during the Olympics. So I was gone. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to be there. And then since then, lacrosse and softball kind of overlap now. So, you know, we kind of have to split up our content team a little bit. So I have not made it out to lacrosse with the stories I hear about how hot it is. I'm not sure I want to, but um, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I would love to shoot lacrosse. You know, anything that's outside is, is, uh, you know, I'm all game for. So I'm sure one day I'll make it out there. So I know volleyball, you said that you were very nervous going in shooting those games. Do you have the same, um, do you have the same confidence in shooting basketball as you do shooting softball? No, I don't think I'll have anything on the confidence that I have shooting softball, but, but basketball is easier to shoot than volleyball. Volleyball is just like so ridiculously hard it, you have so many bodies in such a small space and I don't know where they're going. Yeah. Um, so you're like, you're just shooting through windows all game and it's just, and then you have like a net in the way of kind of everything. Um, you know, I love volleyball and I love those athletes, but goodness gracious, it is, <laughs> it's, it is tough. Um, you know, and I, I never feel settled in volleyball season until like week one is done or maybe even getting into week two. Um, basketball is a little bit easier for sure. Um, but, but volleyball is, it's just rough. It's rough out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just one last question with regards to AU. I know you're the lead photographer, uh, you have your hands all over everything over there. Um, do you have, I know you, and you mentioned that you have freelancers. Um, are there any other photographers on the staff or is it just you? And then, you know, as you need uh, photographers or videographers or whatever, you kind of pull them in as, as needed. Yeah, it's definitely that, um, that we don't have anyone else on staff that's full time. Whenever Whenever we go into a season, we look for, uh, you know, another shooter that can help out with all the workload. But what's really cool about our content team is a lot of us are, are people that kind of came into the game with <clears throat> having knowledge in, in the other, you know, kind of departments. So 
you know, for example, you know, if I had to go shoot video, I could do that. Or if I had to go, right. if I had to whip up a graphic, I could do that. It's not nearly as good as our people, but so, you know, our graphic designers, um, some of the other people on our content team are wonderful photographers as well. So when they come into season occasionally or, you know, kind of in and out, they'll also shoot, which, which really helps. But as far as being, you know, the only one on staff, you know, it's, it's a one man show for the most part. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But it is nice to have freelancers for sure. Yeah. And I mean, it's definitely good to have the the cross functionality as well that, you know, you've got other people on the staff that can, um, you know, help out when when you're in a pinch or you need yeah. an extra camera or whatever the case is. So yeah. um, that's awesome. Absolutely. Uh, um, the Olympics. I know. Well, I don't know. 2020 was the Olympics. The world shut down, didn't happen. Um, 2021, the Olympics came back around. Were you able to be a part of that? Yeah, and that, it's, that was probably the wildest, you know, year and a half uh, emotionally probably of I my believe life. It. Um, you know, we were on the, the Stand Beside Her tour, which was our pre-Olympic tour in 2020. And um, we we were up in Seattle and like that we all got sent home uh, mm -hmm. because COVID, you know, we kept like, what is COVID? And then it's everywhere, everywhere. I mean, everyone knows. So, so we get sent home and, and I cried for, for days. I was like, my Olympic dream is over. <laughs> what happening? Um, and so, you know, so tour was obviously suspended for that time. Right. Um, and then 2021 came around and they, brought back the tour and the Olympic games were rescheduled for the summer of 2021. Um, and I actually wasn't sure if I was gonna try and, and go with the team. Um, there's just, there's a lot of different puzzle pieces and I just wasn't sure about it. Um, yeah. and Kat Osterman sent me a text message and it, you know, long text, but she was like, you know, a dream is worth fighting for. If, if you want it, go get it. Like you have to go do it, go get it. Um, yeah. So she kind of, she kind of put me in my place and kicked my butt a little bit. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, I got back on tour with the team and, you know, we spent months together, um, you know, just kind of like a, a very, like a family unit with USA. Um, and then went over to the Olympics and we were in Japan for about a month mm -hmm. and, um, it was just the most surreal, wild, completely crazy experience because, you know, you're at the Olympics, but you can't leave your hotel yes. and you know, you're at the Olympics, but there's no one in the stands. And there's, there was just a lot of things where you're like, this isn't how it's supposed to be, but this is what it is. And I'm yep. grateful for it type of thing. So, um, yeah, we were over in Japan. That was my third time in Japan. We were over there for about a month and, um, you know, came away with a silver medal and, you know, lost to Japan in a, in a really tough, gold match, uh, gold medal game. But, um, yeah, I came away with a silver medal and, and that'll always probably be, you know, the, the most proud I'll ever have been to be a part of something in my career. That's awesome. Do you have, I mean, the silver medal is incredible, obviously, but do you have like a singular moment that stands out? Uh, even if it's away from the field, you know, like whether it was, um, well, COVID, like, were you guys yeah. able to go to like the dining hall or like, I would assume as a team, you're able to be together, but any, anything that sticks out as memorable from the trip, aside from the, the silver medal. Yeah. Um, I would probably say hearing the national anthem and, and taking, I don't know if I've ever actually talked about this, but, but hearing the national anthem and usually I'm, I'm taking like a million photos, but at the Olympics, you're in the camera. Well, so, you know, you can't go on the field or anything like that. So yeah. So the national anthem's playing and, you know, your heart's beating a million times a minute. So, you know, I took my photos of what was going on and then I took like, you know, the last 15 or 20 seconds to actually stand there and take in the national anthem. Normally I, I'm just, I'm shooting the whole time. You don't even, you know, you just keep working. Yeah. Um, but yeah, st kind of standing there and and taking in what was happening, you know, that, that was a dream to go to the Olympics, like a literal dream. Um, yep. and to be able to, to, to be there was, was pretty great. So I had about 15 or 20 seconds to like soak it in. And then it was like, okay, let's get back to work. That's so awesome. I would say, I would say probably that. Yeah. Would you consider, um, would you want to go to the Olympics again? Or was this the one time good enough? I, I know things change. Again. 
Yeah. yeah. No, I would love to do it again. I would love to do it, you know, in the more, you know, traditional way where there's fans and, you know, all, yeah. all the kind of hoopla and everything. Um, it, it would be pretty, pretty special to do that. Um, but you know, there's, there's just always something that's going to stick with, with the team that we had. Cause you know, again, I'd, I'd been with a lot of those athletes for so long. So, 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 you know, to be kind of coming up with them through the years and then get to all go do this thing was, uh, was pretty special, but given the opportunity, fingers crossed that, you know, we're playing in 2028. I don't really know if it looks good right now, but, um, yeah, fingers crossed that we could have that opportunity again. We'll we'll manifest it. We'll make it happen. Yeah, I would love for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so camera, uh, I actually don't know what type of camera you shoot with. Um, brand Canon, Nikon, Sony. What are you shooting with? Canon one DX Mark three and uh, the one DX Mark two are are my main ones. Um, the backups are a five D Mark four. And I think I have a couple of 5D Mark III's from uh, from a number of years ago. So, yeah, I'm okay. Canon strong. I, I think I'm the only one on our content team that's Canon. Um, you know, our video team uh, they they're running and gunning with Sony. Yep. Um, so, but I'm a uh, I'm Canon strong, going strong. I mean, the work is incredible. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it's definitely working out for you. Um, like I said, I've shot baseball, never shot softball. Um, I assume you're using, um, 300, 400. Yeah, we, we get the, um, the 400 out of 2.8, um, which is really fun. It's, and it's, it's so funny because to me, it's a lens and it's like great. And it's like a, it's like a fun toy, but the athletes, like they think it's awesome. They call it big daddy. Like when I walk <laughs> by on the field, they're all like, Oh, like, they think it's so funny. Um, they they love that lens. If, yeah. if we're hanging out in the dugout and like, you know, there's a pitching change or something and there's, you know, two minutes to burn time, the athletes will come over and like shoot with it. They just That's think awesome. it's so funny. Um, but, you know, it's always funny when an athlete like, well, you'll have the 400 on and they'll be like, can you take a picture of me? And they'll like step in front of the camera. Like right next to That's not how this works. <laughs> I need you to go to center field if you want yes. me to take a picture of you. Um, so yeah, no, yeah, definitely the 400, the 70 to 200, you know, just kind of like probably every other Standard. sports photographer. Yeah. And, uh, my other, my other favorite lens is the Sigma 35 art. I, I love that, that bad boy. So yeah, those are, those would be my three go-tos. Okay. And then that's for shooting a game. Uh, I, I mean, again, just looking at your social media, looking at your website, you shoot, I, I feel like any style you need to shoot, you can do and do it well, whether it's a game, whether it's a studio, whether it's a portrait, a uh, headshot, like you're, you've got everything covered. Um, so, I mean, do you think you have a distinctive style? Like if, if I lined up, if I had a lineup of photos, do you think somebody would be able to point at it out and say, hey, that that's Jade's photo? That's a great question. I've never been asked that before. Um, I don't know. I, I I really tend to to default back to portraits. I don't think people are doing that enough in the, I definitely in the women's softball space. Um, yeah. And and no like, and I don't say that with any with any like hate or anything. I just think that that you know obviously like the action is is what people come to the game for. But I think that. Um, portraits are so important for these athletes and in showing them and showing their soul and, and showing their personality. So, um, I would think maybe if you kind of lined up some soft, some game stuff and there was like portraits, they would be like, that's probably Jade. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say that, but no, that's a, that's a really, that's a really good question. That one got me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I truly love, um, again, you know, I know, it's constantly preached like peak action, peak action. You know, you want to get the, um, the big play, the home run, the celebration, all that good stuff. Um, but I, I do think that there's something to um, like the intimacy of some of your photos. I know you posted one, I think I saw on Twitter on X, yeah. um, but it was a side by side of like your editing process. Mm -hmm. And um the caption yeah. was something along the lines of like, this photo was all about the shadows. 
And yeah. um, I don't know, like the photos, just, it's to me, that's just a lot more interesting than, you know, a home run or, yeah. you know, a player screaming after making a big play or something like that. Yeah. Um, do you, do you actively seek out those moments or actually better question? Um, do you have these athletes pose for these, or are these all kind of spur of the moment you're capturing the, you know, the moment in the moment? I would say, um, I would say there's so much of photography that I've taken that is not your like game action. Mm. Cause if I want to get a picture of Hannah flipping diving at third base, that would mean I'd, I'd have to like sit on her all game, you know? And that's like, you don't know what's going to happen, yes. but if I can sit on her in warmups where I know that the balls, I know where the ball is going and I know it's her turn. I can get that same shot. Um, and, and when it comes to the athletes, like for the, that shadow photo that you're talking about, that's like a more stage thing. Yeah. That's 100% like, Hey, Deja, can you come stand right here? Gotcha. And like, Oh no, I need you to tilt back just a little bit. So that's okay. Great. Now we're going to get it. Okay. Let's get it. Okay, great. Let me get one more. Okay. Now you're good. So that interaction could last 60 seconds. Um, but that kind of goes back to where, you know, the athletes have trust in you and, and yep. they, they put their faith in you that, you know, you're going to do what you need to do to make them look really good and push them on their way. So a lot of that is just really quick staging, um, and really quick posing to kind of get what you want and, uh, and get out of there. So, yeah. And even, even a lot of, you know, a lot of defensive stuff, a lot of hitting stuff. A lot of that is like between innings when you know where people are going to be. Um, yeah. It's really nice because having worked with a lot of these athletes for so long, um, you know, our shortstop will jog out on the field in between innings to take her warm up reps, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just look at her, I'll look at Hannah flipping and go like this. And that means I'm going to photograph your throw. So really elongate. Same thing with the catchers. Like we kind of have a little bit of like, you know, hand signals to where they're so familiar with me being out there That's that they awesome. know for me and they know, you know, when I'm going to try and photograph them. And that, that really helps too, for sure. That's awesome. That's like great information to have. <laughs> um, yeah. um, definitely some things that I, I, I would want to incorporate. I know, um, you know, I, in shooting the last couple of years, uh, me and my buddy, we photographed one of the high school teams here and um, basically have, you know, full reign. We can go wherever, mm -hmm. you know, walk around. We can go in the, in the, you know, clubhouse and the dugout the whole night. Yeah. Um, but to your point, the players got to know us and, mm -hmm. you know, I know there was one of the guys, one of the pitchers ace on the team. But um, he like struck somebody out or like struck out the side or whatever. And as he's walking off the field, looked at me and pointed. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like, I loved it so much. Uh -huh. The fact that he actively, you know, like searched for me. Yeah. Um, but one thing for me, and I don't want to make this all about me. No, but, go ahead. Um, I always, I've always been of the mindset of like, I don't want like I want everything to be as authentic as possible. So I don't want to tell you to do something that you wouldn't usually do or like, um, you know, stage a scene or anything like that. Um, but I feel like I've also missed a lot of opportunities by not like taking the initiative and, and being like, hey, you know, come over here. I want you to stand here and do this or, you know, whatever yeah. the case is. So, again, referencing the the picture with the shadow. Um it came out incredible, but <laughs> like you wouldn't have necessarily gotten that um, without, you know, calling them over for a minute and, you know, actively making it happen. Yeah, for sure. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot what I want, but if I, so I, I took a photo this last season of um, three of the girls that were in the outfield who were like legends. It was Victoria Hayward, Haley McClinney and uh, Megan Wiggins. And these three are, are legends in our game. 
Mm-hmm. And they're standing in that they're standing in the, in the left field, like kind of like waiting to, to, to go do their pregame defense. And I was like, Hey guys, let's do this real quick. So we took some like pictures of the three of them that would probably not exist otherwise. Cause they're not really ever going to kind of like walk like that, Yeah, but, you know, took those pictures and, and they ended up being so great because it's these three icons in our sport. Now, if I would have walked up and said, Hey guys, can I, you know, can we do this really quick? And they would have been like, Hey, we're in the zone or we're about to go back out, you know, or something like that. Like, that's cool. The, yeah. This is all about an exchange and this is all about communication. And if I say, Hey, Hey, can I borrow you for two seconds? And, the, and they say, Oh, I'm actually going to the bullpen. Like do your thing. Do yeah. your thing. This is not this, what we're doing is, is give and take. And, and, and that even goes to, um, you know, off the field when I'm scheduling photo shoots, we scheduled one um, this past season and we were going to have four athletes and one of them messaged me that morning and was like, Hey, I have to go to the chiropractor. And I'm like, girl, do your thing, do what you got to do. Like, you know, it's a, it's a respect thing. Um, so I, I totally agree where you don't necessarily want to manufacture something that's super fake, but you want to, you want to capture the potential of what's there is, that makes is sense. maybe kind of how I try to navigate around it. That um, makes sense. Yeah. So, and also it's like, you know, getting to know athletes personality. So if I know someone's maybe a little bit shy, like Maddie Husky from softball, like for some reason she doesn't think she's photogenic. So like, I want to pull her out of her shell a little bit and she's yeah. like so photogenic. And so, you know, the, you do that little by lit, a uh, little by little by little year after year. And, and, you know, that makes a huge difference down the line with the athletes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for, for the gems. Jade. I, <laughs> I definitely appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, so question that I've had in my back pocket for weeks now hit me <laughs> is the trading cards. Oh, how, man. how awesome was like, I didn't realize that that was a dream of mine to have my photo on a trading card. Well, what's that experience been like? I know you've been on YouTube going to, you know, Target and buying up all the cards. Like, that's got to be the most amazing feeling. It absolutely is. It's wild. And when we announced it back in like, I think it was 2020. I don't know if I was like busy or I wasn't like paying attention, but it didn't click what was happening until I like saw a proof of them. And I was like, wait, what are we doing? Like, I don't know why it didn't click in my head. And I collected cards as a kid. Like I was yep. in the Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Craig Griffey Jr. era. Like, you know, I was, I, I loved baseball cards as a kid. Um, and when that first deck came out and I, 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 I think I just like want to cry at how proud I am of our athletes having known them for so long and, and knowing what they sacrifice to be able to be pro softball players, it is not easy. It is not an easy yeah. job. And they are, they show up for the sport year after year and they show up for each other. And, and so to see them on these cards, knowing that like a 10 year old girl is going to go to the store and buy them is just like the, you can see with this dorky smile, like it's, <laughs> it's the best feeling ever. And it's been the most unbelievable experience now. And, and, you know, now we're, We have all four sports and you can buy them, you know, like in an actual store rather than online. Um, Yeah, it's wild. It's still, it's nuts. And I keep being like, this is going to stop at some point. Right. And then we just keep doing them year after year. Um, I've got so many cards at this house um, from over the years. uh, And I've gotten to, to be at games and see these little 10 year old girls with their binders and their cards. And it it just, I just like melts me like you would not believe. Um, I'm very, very proud of it. I think that and the Olympics are probably the two biggest things in my career that I have the most pride for. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I actually, as I'm sitting here, I have a pack sitting right here. So (laughs) (laughs) I promise you, I don't like keep them around my room or anything. (laughs) But uh, yeah, it's been very cool. Shout out tops. Um, so for all of these photos or the, the cards, are these all of your photos or is it a combination of yours and some of the freelancers and things like that? 
the three sports that I photograph, all of those are mine. All the lacrosse photos are um, Kate Devers, who has been our freelancer for the last, for all three lacrosse seasons. She's unbelievable. I mean, she's just like an absolute, just beast when it comes to shooting and everything. So any photo that you see in a, of a lacrosse player is all Kate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But all the, all the rest are mine. It's, it's pretty awesome. So with that said, I've got a pack here no and I wanted to just open up one of them That's and so see, cool. I want to see if you're able to identify, because I know you, you said your memory's not that great, but when it comes to the games, you, yeah. you know, so I just want to see if maybe you can pull one of these and be like, okay, hey, let's I remember, do it. I remember that player or that oh, play man. or the pressure's so on. <laughs> Let's where go. did you uh, where did you get that box from? I got this from Target. Nice. Yep. So, I went there with my niece to show her, and it was just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so, Danielle O'Toole, do you remember oh. this photo? I mean, I remember. I don't know if I remember that game in particular, but you know, Dan, there's no mistaking Danielle O'Toole. Um, <laughs> That one, no, I, that's kind of, pitching's hard. Hitting is a little bit easier to remember the exact play, but uh, yeah, there's no mistaking Daniel O'Toole. So I, I wish I had a better story for that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's try this one. Oh, of course, PEC photo shoot. I mean, that one, that's the big shoot we do every year. Uh, we just did the the one for 2023. Um, I literally almost passed out because it was so hot and I was sick <laughs> at the time. So, uh, and they looked, it, it gets better and better every year. It's a shoot that is challenging for me because, you know, I'm not a quote portrait, you know, kind of photographer. Sure. Um, so it's fun for me to do something different and get the athletes out of uniform, put them in normal clothes and just like see what magic happens. And the one that we just did for softball 2023 was like the most amazing photo shoot ever. So yeah, Can't always wait. love the PEC shoot. Can't wait to see him. <laughs> um, so at some point I've got to go through all these. I'm sure I'll send you pictures, you Please. know, on, on Instagram of me <laughs> opening them, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm hoping awesome. I get, um, I'm hoping I'll pull, a few of the girls from the W that, you know, I've, I've shot or, you know, interacted with. So I'm excited, Absolutely. man. We love our W girls. It's fun watching them on TV and stuff and yes. supporting them. Uh, Sid Colson and Teresa just came out with like a new show. I need to see and it. Yeah. It's wild. It, it's also so crazy because I come from the softball world. So, you know, I know everybody and I know our biggest names and that kind of thing. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I still get nervous when I talk to, you know, what Jenny Finch or something like that, even sure. though, you know, but in basketball, like, I don't really know. I didn't really know anyone. So like, I could, I could just be casually having a conversation with like, you know, I met Natasha cloud and I'm just like, hi, like, <laughs> I, I know you're really big, but like, I don't watch, I, you know, I'm not a basketball person. So yeah. now like getting to know them and getting to watch them on TV and like, they're just mega superstars that, yes. you know, it's, it's so fun to get into basketball and get like into volleyball and stuff. Cause before I was just, I didn't know anything about anything. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so photography is, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's an art. I mean, it's, I would compare it to somebody who paints or draws pictures or, um, you know, plays music or whatever the case is. Um, and I, I feel like inevitably there are going to be things that annoy you about your art that you see from other people or anything like that. Um, do you have any photography pet peeves? Cause mine personally is when I deliver a photo or a, a um, you know, a, a package or whatever, and people edit the photos and I'm like, well, they were already edited like I don't I don't need you to throw a filter on it or anything like that um do you have any pet peeves in the in the world of photography I have never been asked this question and I feel like this is like a this is a chance for me to just let it let it out you know? <laughs> yes um, yes that one for sure um I've ran across maybe two or three athletes that were great at color at coloring um 
that's about it. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that one, that one definitely hurts my heart when someone throws some like just an awful filter on a yeah. photo. Uh, that one kills me. Um, I feel like in softball, when I, when I'm on Instagram and stuff, photos that just aren't level kind of, I, I don't know. I think it's because there's, there's like a fence. So there's like an actual way mm. to, to level your photo in softball. Yeah. Um, so that one kind of gets me, um, I don't know. I feel like also when you like send someone photos and they don't like respond, but then they oh post them and you're like, yes. you could have just like liked or hearted my message. Like you didn't yes. have to do um, Yeah. But I would say nowadays, um, having been with, I, I keep saying it, but having been with these athletes for a while, like they know the drill um, and they, they don't do that stuff really. They, they didn't do it a ton before. They really don't do it now. Mm -hmm. um our athletes are like really good with you know tagging au and posting it correctly and not making it look crazy um so yeah i would say that they're pretty good at it but um man i feel like i feel like i should have one or two other ones (laughs) you know what this one's the fault of instagram but that you can't really post like a portrait dimension you know pops it that one's awful so that's not on anybody except instagram but um Yeah, adding the filter, you really nailed that one. And you should get so bad, right? It's never yeah. just like a little bit. It's always like so bad. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> and then they tag you in the filtered photo. And yeah. it's like, that's not that's not the photo that I took. Oh, hit remove tag <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> um the so we've touched on it quite a bit. Like you're extremely busy throughout the year. Uh, photographing for various things um is there something for those who don't know photography the the actual taking of the photos is can be difficult but to me I feel like the editing process or like sifting through thousands of photos like just very tedious very time consuming the whole night um is there anything about the photography process that you don't like or like you could do without or if you could pawn it off on somebody else you would that's a good one i'm gonna say keywording i'm gonna say that pretty confidently um yeah and i mean keywording only takes maybe like 20 minutes per game but it just is never something you want to do i mean Mm. we have so many athletes we have so many games and everything within the company that like, we have to, we yeah. can't just spit out our photos with no information. We have to keyword them. Um, so I would say that, cause you know, when you finish editing a game and it's like 1145 and you're like, I, my, I can't even see straight anymore. The last thing you want to do is go type Haley McClinney defense. Well, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't really want to do that. So <laughs> yeah, I would say, um, I would say keywording would be my pretty confident answer. Okay. Probably and setting the... up the studio sometimes because I believe that. You know, I once saw a tweet that was like sports photography is setting up and breaking down a studio every day until you die. And I was like, that feels kind of accurate sometimes. Yeah. So I could do without having to like set up for media day. That would be that would be great. I hear you on that. <laughs> I'm not as young as I once was. <laughs> um on the flip side, I mean, we've talked about a lot. You know, you love the players that you've that you've grown. I mean, you you've grown with um, mm-hmm. over the years. Um, you know, the experience at the Olympics. Um, what what do you love most about the photography process? Man, probably a couple of things. I think I think that feeling when you show an athlete a picture of them. And they say, this is the greatest, this is the best photo that's ever been taken of me. And and it's not necessarily because it's like technically the greatest photo in the world, but because you captured them for, for who they are. Mm. Um, That is a really profound feeling. Um, And also just the athlete's appreciation is very real. And I, and I, I don't know if it's because we're in women's sports, you know, like, I don't know if MLB guys or something like they get so much content that they don't care. You know, I don't know what it is, but our athletes are so excited. And so 
grateful for content and they eat it up. And, and that feeling of feeling like I'm doing good work, I'm doing work that is appreciated is, is a really great feeling. Um, so I would say any positive athlete interaction, number one, um, number two, I really enjoy the, the figuring things out. So if I'm at a photo shoot and I have some like off the wall idea, I love trying it out and it doesn't scare me to say either let's keep working on it or let's bail on it. Like I've done plenty of shoots where I'm like, Hey, let's try out this thing. And I like put an athlete where I want them. And then I take the picture and not picture. And I'm like, this is terrible. Let's not do this. Like, I think that we should encourage that. Like we should encourage trying and failing. Like like, don't just shoot what you think is your strength, you know, try other things out and, and pull the plug. Or there's kind of a really beautiful sweet spot of like, sticking with something and working it and working it. And then 20 minutes later, you're like, now we got it. And that's where you get really, really good images. So just kind of like not being afraid to be in that creative process where you can absolutely fail, but you can absolutely keep working at it until you succeed. Um, There's something great about that. And, and I think, and I would encourage anyone who's, who's maybe on the younger side to do that more and not be afraid of it. Don't just, don't just go to your strengths. My strength on a 35 would be, Hey, athlete squat, do this look. And I'm going to take your photo. Well, I know I can do that, but Mm. what I can't do is put them on this railing and try and get a reflection and try and do the, this and the, that, you know, that's, that's different. So, so uh, yeah, the process is really great. Um, And then I guess the third one would maybe be like, you know, there's, we're, we're so, in with social media, right? Like everything yeah. we do is like on social media. Yep. I posted my absolute best work and it gets like half the likes that my normal photo, it'll get like 75 likes. Right. Sure. And I'm like, man, I killed that photo. That's so good. That was such growth for me. Like I really worked it and did. And then I could just post your run of the mill photo of Kat Osterman and it gets a million likes. And I'm like, yeah. and, and but I think there's something really great about being able to toss that out the window and being like, look, I know where my growth is. I know what's pushing my limits. I know, you know, where I'm getting a little bit better every time I do it. Um, And so there's something that's just kind of like really greatly hilarious about being like, this is my best photo ever. And like, no one liked it. You know, I just, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. So um, yeah, just having a great sense of, of knowing where your growth is and and what is making you better is is yes. a really cool feeling for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it just want to touch on a couple of things that you said. I didn't want to stop you because you were on a roll. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, with regards to social media, I I do find it like there's been a few times when I've definitely wanted to remove myself from social media, mm-hmm. um, in terms of like posting like photos from games and things like that. Um, just because, um, I, on the one hand, yes, you do want people, uh, to see what you're working on. You want to see, you want to show your growth. You want to show all these different things. Um, but at the same time, I'm just kind of like social media, like it's a place for your highlights. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's more to the photography than just getting like feedback from friends and family and and things like that. Um, Where uh, I guess to kind of tie it in, you know, when an athlete comes to you and they're like, Hey, you know, I love this photo. And you're like, really? And it's like, yeah, because, (laughs) you know, you caught this moment or like when I was standing there and you got it, I was, you know, thinking about the, you know, and it just like brings them back to a moment. Um, Mm -hmm. I think there's just more, there's more, um, that means more to me than, you know, getting, you know, a hundred, a thousand, 5,000 likes on a photo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of when I, when I talk with our athletes and and when I'm shooting, you know, I want to take the photo that when an athlete has a trophy room, in 20 years when they're retired and they're completely gone for the game. Like I want them to have those memories. I want that picture to be on their wall to, to mean something to them. Um, and it's really cool now 
you know, like you're saying where that means more, you know, I have athletes that I've worked with athletes that have long since retired since I've been, you know, first photographed them. And they're still using those images for either just like trip down memory lane or promoting themselves or their website or social. So your impact, you know, is something that's lasting. It's not just getting 300 likes on a photo and then it's over. It's, you know, all the other things that come with it that, that are like way more impactful than, you know, a light count or, or anything like that. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, again, we've been talking about AU, we've been talking about a lot of women's sports. Um, what, and correct me if I'm wrong, primarily you only shoot women's sports. I know you shot the Cubs recently, <laughs> um, and we'll touch on that briefly, <laughs> but, um, uh, what's drawn you to shooting, uh, women's sports? Is it because you were a collegiate athlete? Is it, um, you know, that's just kind of where, uh, the job opportunity or the the opportunity came along. Like, do you have any desire to shoot, you know, NBA or, you know, men's sports or anything like that? I, I definitely, I'm trying to figure out really how to word this. The answer is no, I I don't have any desire to shoot men's sports. Um, And it has nothing to do. It's like, I hope that men's sports are like thriving and doing awesome. If with women's sports, if I'm not doing it, if I, if I'm not shooting it and committing my career to bettering pro women's softball, like, I don't know who else is. Sure. Like I've, I've shot hundreds of games in my career where I'm the only one there. Um, and that's not, it's not like a, I'm awesome type thing. It's like, we're just, we, we have so much work to do. We are mm. in the trenches of women's sports and of growing women's sports. Yes. Um, and I feel like that I can make a huge impact in this arena versus if I go and I were to go shoot the NFL, I'm just another, I'm just another number that's out there yeah. shooting Whereas in, in, in pro softball and now in athletes unlimited, I can see the direct impact of my work. And that is so motivating and it's humbling and it's, it, it lights such a fire and it just encourages me every day to try and get better. Um, a for myself and, and for the work that I'm doing now, but I think that it, it, it makes, it lifts everybody else up. So when I have a 18 year old that DMS me on Instagram and is like, Hey, I really want to get in this space. That's me pushing myself and, and trying to, and, and, and trying to, to, to instill shooting in this, in this space and in this community, that's going to better for better her for when she comes up and she wants to work in this community. And now there's a bunch of us. Um, so it's, it's no, it's no hate on men's sports or anything like that. I just feel like I am doing the most impactful work here. And in 70 years when I retire or when I'm long gone or something like it will probably be at a softball field because, um, that's, that's the work that I'm the most passionate about. And, and I'm, I love the fact that I've committed my, my career, my time to the softball athletes and the game of softball. Um, so the only thing I would maybe do is like, I'm a diehard saints fan. So if the saints ever were like, yo, you want to come shoot a game? I'd be like, yeah, maybe, but um, (laughs) I can, I can pretty confidently say women's sports is where I'm going to be. This is where I want to be. I like it. I, I, I kind of thought that that would be your response, but, (laughs) um, I I love, I, I love where your head's at in terms of, um, again, we we've mentioned it a few times impact, you know, and, um, I'm with you. I mean, I would love to shoot the NFL. I know it's very difficult to to shoot NFL. Um, but to your point, you're just a you're just another person. You're another vest at at the game as opposed to um what you're doing and, you know, having a genuine connection with the athletes. And I think again, impact, impact, impact. Uh, not to beat a dead horse, but no, uh, no. And you know what? Like the people that are out there shooting NFL games, that's, that is their calling and that is their passion. And like that, that like we all, there's, there's space for all of us, you know, they would be like, yeah, no women's sports or, or yeah, no pro softball is like not my jam. And like, that's, 
that's cool. Like I, there's space enough for everybody and, and there's space enough for everybody who is, who's coming up and who's like wanting to join this space. And that's, that's, what's really cool about sports. You know, there's like a million sports teams in the U S. So if you yeah. want to like get in this space, like go find one and stick with them. And you know, where there's, there's room enough for all of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if you don't mind me asking, I know you said you got into uh, pro softball at 25. How old are you now? I'm 33. I will be, uh, I'll be 34 later this year. So still, still young and spry <laughs> running, running around the softball fields in hundred degree weather. So I think yeah. you're, I think you're okay right now. <laughs> um, what's something that you wish you knew sooner about photography and photographing, uh, sports? Um, golly, you are hitting me with like some really good <laughs> questions. Something I knew sooner. I mean, technically probably like not shooting on auto, I guess. Like we all probably started out shooting on auto, um, which is like super necessary, but I also wish I would have like taken the time to figure out like what is F stop. Um, so I would say technically maybe that honestly the stuff I wish I would have known back then is all in the post-production and like um organizing space because you know you're gonna you're, you're gonna learn the hard way when you're out shooting but like I wish I would have like cataloged my early hard drives and like saved all yeah. that stuff properly and created a library for myself and like there's a lot of stuff I just wasn't thinking down the line whereas sure. nowadays that's like all I think about is I'm like, okay, in 10 years, how am I going to access this hard drive? Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I would say also probably it doesn't, don't get too caught up in gear and things like that. I mean, we all yeah. want the newest, greatest stuff, but um, you know, a great image is a great image, no matter if it's taken on a 1DX or you took it on a Rebel 2, you know, who cares, yeah. you know? So yeah, probably somewhere along those lines. I like it. <laughs> um, and I know you we've talked about how just how much you've done in like honestly a, a pretty short amount of time. Um is there anything on Jade's photography bucket list um that you want or need to accomplish prior to hanging up your your cameras? Yeah, there there is. I think the first is definitely um I would love to be able to to merge sports and kind of my art his you know art and art history roots and have a um a gallery show of you know some of my best work that displays our athletes in all of their beautiful glory they should be four feet high and you know um and just looking majestic so I, I would love to be able to get in the gallery space um to show this work um it's very you know, it's very specific. It's a very niche thing. And and I think, you know, opening up people's eyes to it and, and uh, showing people what we're doing in the women's sports space is, is really important. So Agreed. definitely having a gallery show. I know I have a career ahead of me, so I'm trying not to get too impatient about it, but um, yeah, I would definitely love to make that happen. Um, and then I think probably just like anyone else, when you think of you know, like big things, it's like, you know, being on sport, you know, having a cover of sports illustrated or, sure. or, uh, you know, something like that. But, but what's really cool about the space that I'm in is LeBron James is amazing. And I, and LeBron is, is wonderful, but like shooting LeBron or something is like, not, is not my, my dream or my goal. Sure. My dream yeah. goal was to shoot Kat Osterman. And did. I got to do that. And, you know, and so it's just like, and again, LeBron is wonderful and to shoot him would be a wonderful experience, but, but, you know, kind of having the, having the opportunity to shoot the people that are the biggest to me is, has been really cool. So I think continuing to do that and continuing to, to try and capture our biggest names and stuff is, will probably just be a permanent fixture on the bucket list for forever. So, you, you know, go. definitely number one would be getting in a gallery space. I would love to do that. Okay. And from, from everything that I've heard you talk about today, I'm sure it will happen at some point, <laughs> whenever you. you decide to, to make it happen, we'll figure <laughs> a way. Um, 
So one of my favorite questions to ask, just because I get a, a myriad of answers, is I think photography in a lot of ways uh, is a microcosm for life on a, on a few different levels. And um, so what's something that you have learned from photography that you're able to apply to your everyday life? Oh, man, you are killing it with these. Um, <laughs> um, that's a really, that's a really good one. Honestly, also, I feel like there's a lot of, there's a couple of different answers, but I feel like the one that's most relevant to me is, you know, the, the players kind of call me like a hype woman, you know, like on media day, I've like drank in two Celsius and I'm just like bouncing <laughs> off the walls and I'm like, yes, photography. And I get like so hype and, and I look at our athletes and I'm like, you look amazing right now. Like you look unbelievable. And I, and I truly mean that with like every fiber in my being and someone could tell that to me. And I'm like, I don't, I don't believe you. You know, yeah. I think, I think that we need to believe. I think I need to believe and, and, and hear other people when, when they're, when they're empowering you and when they're lifting you up to, to accept that, because I want our players, when I tell them that I want them to stand a little bit taller and say, yeah, you know, like I look a mate, like Tori Vidalis. I'm like, you will look so good. My face is going to melt. And she's like, like, yes, I do confidence. And I think there's a huge lesson yeah. to be learned from our athletes on confidence. Um, because as much as I dish that out, I really don't take it very well. And, and they have taught me, um, you know, every time we do a photo shoot, you know, they, they, they show me what that's like, what confidence is like. And, um, so yeah, I think, I think I'll go with, with there's probably a lot of other like deep philosophical answers, but I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with confidence is probably something that, uh, I love it. that I've learned, you know, from, from our athletes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, so I have one last question before we get out of here. Um, it's not photography related. <laughs> it's not photography related. Um, I hear you are a big Harry Potter fan. So my first question to you is which house do you belong to? I mean, I'm a Gryffindor. I, I'm like, I'm a Gryffindor, but I also think I could be Slytherin. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm a Gryffindor through and through, so. Okay. <laughs> and we know you played college softball. You played all four years, right? I did, yeah. Played softball for four years. Um, How would you fare in a game of Quidditch? Have you played Quidditch? No, I haven't played Quidditch. I feel like I would be pretty good. Um, I feel like I would probably be a beater. Um, I feel like that's that's a good strong position. Okay. Uh, maybe not the most speed, maybe not the most quickness, but a good sense of like the field of play and like the pace of the game. Um, so I would say I, I'd be a pretty good beater. You'd be great. You'd be a huge hit in the softball community, by the way, because <laughs> our girls talk Harry Potter all day long. So this is like <laughs> this is right in the wheelhouse. But fantastic. Um, yeah, I feel pretty confident about that. I'm gonna go with the beater. You know. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jade, I appreciate you so much for taking the time to to come and sit with me. Um, definitely dropping gems throughout. So I I, <laughs> I do appreciate that as well. And really, just again. I, I admire so many of of um you know you and other photographers on on social media uh just because you can tell how much you care about what you're doing and just the amount of time that you put into I don't want to say perfecting because I know everything's kind of a work in process but <laughs> um you know like perfecting your craft to to inspire me to inspire others so um, the fact that you took the time to, to kind of talk about your journey and, you know, your processes and things like that. Appreciated sincerely. Well, no, seriously, like, and right back at you, because there are a lot of great stories to tell with, with shooters and stuff like that. And, you know, working in 
pro sports, you know, it's really all about the athletes. So to be able to kind of like share our story and stuff like that, and to have the platform to be able to do that. So like, thank you for, for taking the time out of your day to, to put a spotlight on the people that are the ones doing the spotlighting. So yeah. So really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun for sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure we we will be in touch. Hopefully our paths cross at some point on a softball field or something. Um, but again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing but the best, uh, season starts in a week or so plus or minus. So best of luck with the season. Stay hydrated. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, volleyball, send all the good vibes my way. Absolutely. will. (laughs) um, before we wrap up, is there anything, um, we should let the people know I'll have your Instagram, your Twitter, your website, uh, anything else? No, I, I, well, I guess if, if, you know, if you're a, if you're a younger shooter, if you're in high school or college or anything like that, you know, my DMS are, are wide open for talking. I'll, I'll answer any questions about gear, about experience, about website, portfolio, anything like that. Any questions, you know, um, I want to communicate with, with the people coming after us as much as I can. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always available with any kind of questions on photo. So if you've uh, if you've made it to the end of this and you want to hit me up, please do so on uh, on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. Perfect. And AU is where can we watch AU? Is it on? Uh, what where can we where can we watch? The ESPN family of networks. Um, okay. I believe all of uh, I'm I don't know if this is completely accurate, but I believe that all of volleyball is going to be on ESPN and some whether it's on the the app or actually on like regular TV broadcast. So so usually okay. ESPN um, and then you can also go on our YouTube channel and we release the, the games in full. So oh, you can perfect. go back and, and go watch a softball game from, you know, week two or something like that. So YouTube awesome. as well. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. All right. Thank you again. We will be in touch. Absolutely. Uh, sending you all the great vibes for volleyball and we'll talk. Awesome. Wonderful to meet you. You have a good night. Okay. You too. Yeah, I respect all right. Bye. Shot. I respect the shooter. <laughs>